Welcome to the channel of the Chronicles of the End Times. As we analyze the prevailing societal trends, it becomes increasingly apparent that the standards of moral acceptability are constantly evolving. This shift, which is often perceived by many Christians as a sign of moral decay, involves a noticeable surge in the cultural acceptance and even glorification of themes that were once considered taboo or fringe, particularly those associated with Satan. It is crucial to recognize that this phenomenon extends beyond the proliferation of satanic symbols in media and entertainment. The most concerning aspect is the underlying change in attitudes towards evil, darkness, and rebellion against divine order. The normalization of what was universally acknowledged as evil and wicked indicates a moral and spiritual desensitization within society where people become less aware of the presence and influence of evil. For a believer who has experienced spiritual rebirth, the words spoken by the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians hold particular relevance in this era, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6 verse 12. We are presently living in an age where we can clearly discern the workings of these principalities and the ruler of darkness in our world. We can observe the influence of spiritual wickedness in influential positions, shaping the world we inhabit. Scripture addresses this condition within the context of the end times. In 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, the Apostle Paul cautions about a falling away or rebellion that will precede the day of the Lord. The Greek term employed is apostasia, which denotes a defection or revolt against established truth. This falling away is not simply a rebellion against social norms, it signifies a fundamental departure from the truth of God's word and the established moral order. In contemporary times, we witness a noticeable expression of this departure from truth in the increasing acceptance of values that could be perceived as satanic. These values encompass the elevation of self-importance above humility, the promotion of relativism over absolute truth, and the embrace of moral ambiguity instead of adhering to clear scriptural mandates. While society may not openly acknowledge belief in or allegiance to Satan, the adoption of principles that contradict biblical teachings may suggest a broader spiritual apostasy. In simpler terms, even if individuals do not explicitly claim to believe in or support Satan, their acceptance of behaviors and ideas rooted in evil and darkness, which stand in opposition to the teachings of the Bible, aligns them with Satan's camp. Over the past couple of years, there have been several instances where the devil has been celebrated or occult imagery has been prominently displayed. From carnivals worldwide to the opening ceremonies of major sporting events, the devil has been showcased on stage, and music videos have prominently featured satanic themes. These portrayals often involve literal depictions of the devil and demons engaging in dancing and singing. There are even sports teams openly associated with the devil. Such occurrences deviate significantly from the norm. In my upbringing, even my non-believing friends wanted nothing to do with the devil. However, in today's context, the devil is sometimes treated as fashionable or simply an accessory. Presently, we inhabit a culture that no longer acknowledges the true nature of the devil, evil. Furthermore, there is a prevalent belief that the devil does not exist. As a French poet once said, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. This statement implies that by persuading people to deny his existence, the devil can operate unnoticed and unchallenged, allowing evil to proliferate. From a theological standpoint, the devil, as the embodiment of evil, endeavors to undermine moral order and spiritual truth. By eradicating belief in his existence, he removes a clear and identifiable source of temptation and malevolence, enabling him to work in the shadows. This lack of belief in a personal force of evil leads to complacency, where malevolent acts may be attributed solely to human nature or societal influences, without considering the spiritual dimension. While it is true that our human nature has its own works, as outlined in the book of Galatians, the Bible also emphasizes the existence of a real devil who blinds people's minds from perceiving the radiant light of the gospel. In the passage of 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 to 4, it states that if the message of our gospel is hidden, it is hidden from those who are lost, whose minds have been blinded by the God of this world, referring to the devil. The devil has employed a crafty deception by convincing many individuals that he does not exist. 
There are those who sincerely believe that the devil is a fictional creation, a mere construct of human imagination used to explain the wickedness displayed by humanity. Unfortunately, those who deny the reality of the devil unknowingly fall into the grasp of the Antichrist. I implore you, my brothers, sisters, and friends, to refrain from venturing down the perilous path towards which the world is heading. Do not toy with the devil, and do not naively adopt the notion of his non-existence. The same Bible that speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ also repeatedly describes the devil as prowling the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Throughout the years, I have encountered numerous Christians who, in their innocence, proclaim that they do not believe in the devil. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, we are urged to be vigilant and clear-minded because the devil, our adversary, roams like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. As children of God, we do not entertain the notion of the devil or engage in darkness. In the present era, where society's moral compass appears increasingly misaligned with biblical principles, we witness a troubling tendency of blurring the distinct boundaries between good and evil. This blurring carries significant consequences and serves as a stark reminder of the prophetic warnings found in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. This falling away, as mentioned in scripture, directly pertains to our current times, a period marked by a distressing decline in moral and spiritual values that closely aligns with the end times prophesied in scripture. Have you ever observed the world and pondered the moral direction of its people? What then constitutes this moral decay that so closely aligns with the prophecy of the end times? Essentially, it is a collective turning away from the pursuit of holiness and an embrace of a worldview that opposes the Christian faith. The proliferation of such ideologies sets the stage for the rise of the man of lawlessness, as described by the Apostle Paul. This is not simply a passive drift, but an active strike towards embracing deception. The devil's cunning finds fertile ground in a culture that prioritizes personal autonomy over divine authority and subjectivism over absolute truths found in the Bible. Satan employs a strategy that is not always characterized by overt opposition. Instead, he often entices people into complacency and subtly redefines sin as societal progress. Many individuals hold the misconception that Satan will openly reveal himself to the world, proudly declaring, follow me onto the path of destruction. However, his intention is to operate in the shadows. It becomes difficult for people to combat an enemy they do not believe exists or perceive as merely a product of imagination. This deception becomes evident when the existence of the devil is downplayed, reducing him to a relic of superstition from the past rather than recognizing him as the present adversary described in scripture. By downplaying the reality of the devil, we risk being ill-equipped for the ongoing spiritual warfare outlined in the Bible. The normalization of practices that were once considered inherently evil has led to a cultural indifference towards the forces of darkness. Consequently, we witness an increasing number of individuals engaging in beliefs and practices explicitly forbidden in the Bible. For instance, witchcraft is on the rise, with people genuinely viewing it as a positive pursuit. This is a time marked by the prevalence of the occult, where individuals seek guidance through wrongful and evil means such as palm reading, seances, and Ouija boards. This cultural shift is not a mere superficial trend, it signifies a spiritual stronghold. Scripture warns us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and powers of this dark world. The societal embrace of the devil and the flirtation with darkness that we observe are more than just cultural phenomena. They serve as significant spiritual signals, calling the church to awaken from its complacency. It is a pivotal moment for the church to stand firmly and earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, Jude 1 verse 3. By doing so, the church can shine as a beacon of truth in an increasingly dark world. As stated in the Bible, when the enemy advances like a flood, God will raise his standard. Even in a generation characterized by sin and unholiness, where people prefer darkness over light, God is present, thriving, and still communicates with his children. While many succumb to Satan's deception, it is not necessary for you to do so. God not only exists and maintains control over the world, but he also takes a personal interest in your life and communicates with you through his sacred words. Let us not be deceived into dismissing the devil as a mythical and harmless character from folklore. 
On the contrary, he actively seeks to undermine faith, distort truth, and ensnare souls. As believers, it is crucial for us to equip ourselves with the complete armor of God, standing firmly in the truth of his word and the power of his might. In a time when truth is under attack, we are called to be agents of change and illumination, countering moral decay with the preserving influence of righteousness and the illuminating truth of the gospel. As the body of Christ, may we navigate these end times with discernment, unwavering commitment to the gospel, and steadfastness. As the world grows darker, the light of Christ within us must shine even brighter, proclaiming the truth that a genuine and active spiritual enemy does exist. However, we have an even greater assurance in the victorious King Jesus, whose triumph is certain and whose kingdom will endure forever. Thank you for your attention, and may God bless you.